may be asking why I'm standing here with a metal garbage can in my house and some carpet pad with a rubber bag. My answer to that question is because of the potential of an EMP, which stands for an electromagnetic pulse. If you don't know what that is, I would recommend that you listen very carefully because when a nuclear device goes off, like in Hiroshima and Nagasaki on the ground, it has the potential of, of course, devastating everything, killing everything, knocking down buildings. But wouldn't it be, if you're the enemy, wouldn't it be even better to not knock down all the buildings and everything and watch that particular enemy or civilization destroy itself? And watch people just mangle and kill and disease. Well, they can do that. They've been able to do that for a long time. And what they do is, is instead of dropping the nuclear bomb on the ground, they detonate it a couple hundred miles high. And what happens is, of course, there'll be some radioactive fallout. But what happens is, just just as if a gigantic sunspot it on the sun. What happens is, is it renders everything electronic useless. Now, I don't know if you can really think about that, but that means that camera that's filming right now, that means all electricity, that means all radio transmission, that means anything with a circuit board in it or transistors. So computers, cars, the processors that run the pumps for water, so there'd be no water, there'd be nothing, absolutely nothing. And it would take but a couple days before people start looting, robbing, murdering, it'd be terrible. Now, it, it will not kill the life, but the civilization will probably kill each other. However, if you have, if you want to stay in touch with the world, it would be a good idea to do something to protect some electronic equipment. And you can build something called a Faraday cage. A Faraday cage basically disperses the electromagnetic pulse away from whatever's inside the cage, therefore protecting the electronic integrity and components of what's in it. Okay, so here's a metal can, not plastic, metal. If, once you insulate the inside, you put your electronics in here, and put the metal top on it, <clears throat> if an electromagnetic pulse hit, or if a sunspot cycle, which could arbitrarily happen, and it's happened before in the 80s, renders electronic stuff useless, whatever's inside here should theoretically be protected. Now, there are some YouTubes of people showing crude models or Faraday cage. This is basic. But they're using like cardboard. We would not recommend doing that because cardboard can absorb moisture and humidity. And this is not airtight, so if you have any humidity, and if the humidity gets inside or, or the cardboard soaks it up, that could be a conductor of electricity. But, there are carpet pads made, and I'm going to come up close to the camera in a minute. Carpet pads made that once I have felt about a little over half inch thick, and the other side is rubber, just like a tire. So there's the felt on one side and the rubber on the other. It's not very expensive. So you can, you can buy it in whatever size you want. They make, again, they make it for carpet pads. So if you think a five by seven would do, that's fine. Um, I happen to have a larger piece here. And basically, you're gonna line the inside of your Faraday cage. So I've already cut the inside. You can see how nice that fits. And then what I'm gonna simply do, <clears throat> is cut around. I've got a crude piece. I didn't want 
do the videos and watch them cut. And I might have to do a lot of editing. Um, but then you can see that once I get this cut, and I may have to put some slits because it is tapered slightly. Bit, uh, slightly. Once I get this thing measured and cut and put in here, we'll have an incredible insulator. Not cardboard. Again, I would not recommend cardboard. So this is going to go all the way down. I'll have it trimmed up in a minute. <clears throat> and then for extra protection, we're going to put one in the top as well. And of course, simply to do this, all you have to do is to place the top on your larger piece, cut around it, and it doesn't have to be exact and it fits. Now, the rubber actually helps hold, hold it to this, but I'll probably glue it as well, and that way it not only covers this, but a little bit around the edge. So I'm going to have a, a seal, I, I, could, I could hook a thousand watts to that, I could take two wires out of the wall and hook it up to that, and whatever's inside of here is going to be protected. Now, I would recommend having designated things for the inside. And if something happened, you'd want to be able to listen around the world. Um, this is something right here that I have a, uh, a review on. It's called the Texan PLL World Band Receiver, model PL660. And I purchased an extra antenna, shortwave antenna, which this will handle. But you want to make sure that you get a receiver. If you're not an ham radio operator, if you get a transceiver, which I am, I'm going to put a transmitter in there too so I can call for a bell. But at least you want to hear what's going on in the outside world. Now, you may say, well, what happens? Those transmitters may be fried, and you're right. There may not be much on the air, but there will be some people who protected their transmitters, and there will be some that miraculously somehow survive. So to be able to listen to quadrants or zones or areas you don't want to go to, you do want to go to, talk a natural disaster or man-made disaster, you really, really need minimum AM FM, but really you need the shortwave receiver. This has AM FM and the shortwave bands from about um, zero megahertz or kilohertz all the way up to like 30 megahertz. So you'll, you'll get all the international broadcast stations, BBC, um, Voice of America, and that kind of thing. They'll all be transmitting and giving instructions on what to do or not to do. Now, that, whether you want to follow those directions is another whole story that we'll talk about at some point in the future. But <clears throat> by keeping it in the box, putting it in the Faraday cage, along with other electronic devices, we'll put an uh, extra amateur radio, ham radio, um, and, and some things that can be damaged. You're going to be protected. Just you can put this in the garage, you can put it in the basement. Um, wherever you choose to store it, and at least you're protected. And then, unlike the event that we had at EMP, um, but this is a real possibility. There are plenty of YouTubes on it. Wikipedia talks about it. And we hope we never have to undergo that. But it's better to be prepared than not. And in addition, if you want to put a couple of extra AM, FM, little $10 radios, whatever, I'd recommend getting digital ones. And they're great bartering items, or you know, somebody that didn't prepare. If something like that happened, then they're going to be worth a lot of money, or exchange for food or something. And we're just going into the prepper territory, and this is a prepper type item. But having an electronics background, an amateur radio operator, I really have to put a proper Faraday cage, proper insulation, so you can see. In just a minute, I'll have it finished. And I'll show you the end product. Okay, so we have the piece cut for the inside, and just so that we can make sure that the top and that the insulator is adhered to, 
just if you have some extra caulk that's laying around that you know if you don't use it, it's going to dry out add a couple things you're going to put just generously just underneath here you can see it's not dry yet so I can push it back down on the rubber side and then just make sure it's pushed down real good and of course within a day or so a couple hours actually it'll be dry and ain't going nowhere and you'll have your top all insulated and once we adjust the inside of the can I've got it cut with a little bit of overlay be careful because it's really easy to cut it short I know because I did that the first time. Anyways, make sure you have a little overlay. You can always cut it down. And then you may have to put a few slits in the bottom. But the good thing about this can, instead of a 30 gallon, this is a 20 gallon. I did this for two reasons. I'd rather have two 20s than 130. The 30 tapers more, so it's going to be harder to fit something inside without cutting slits. But also, a 30 is going to be deeper, um, and yeah, you can put more stuff, but it's going to be hard to bend over and get all the stuff out, especially if your radio's at the bottom and you want that, or whatever electronic, your phone, extra phone. Um, and it won't be so heavy to drag around. So, you know, believe it or not, just having the pad, because it's a good pad in the can, I mean, it's not super heavy, but it starts to add in the weight. So I wouldn't recommend a 30 gallon, unless for some reason you're just really opposed to having two. Um, there's something else I was going to say. Oh, um, speaking of, before I forget, if you have an extra cell phone and charger, maybe cigarette plug, all those are electronic devices that'll be zapped in an EMP. Put them in here. Um, also, if you have an extra SIM card, Put it in there. That's a circuit board. Um, I wouldn't take a chance. So yeah, it won't be programmed or anything like that, but um, at least you'll have it. And um, if you, I mean, if you don't, if you want to put an actual using cell phone, you could do that too. But I think that would probably be a little overkill. But um, it wouldn't be a bad idea to put some things like that. Maybe a set of. Um, battery operated or even rechargeable family band radios if you're not a ham operator so that you can communicate like somebody has to venture off and met for safety. Um, you can always charge them if they're rechargeable batteries with a generator um, and again you got to be careful because generator um, may have some electronic components but a lot of generators are going to be the old style with uh, points and plugs and stuff. So um, honestly, I'm not sure how that would survive. You know, the more things in the Faraday case are electronic or anything to do with electronic, the better. But once we finish this, I'll show you the final product. Okay, we are gluing the insulated carpet pad to the garbage can. What we're gonna do is section at a time generously using some uh, silicone caulk and we're going to place some dumbbells on that section. It's probably about a quarter of it at a time. You just have to let it dry a little bit before you glue the next section. So the insulator, the rubber, one side rubber felt on the other carpet pad is now drying and basically I just used a variety of some caulk. Some of it kind of on the way out, but it had enough stickiness to where it should adhere. And I put, uh, I wish I had all of these kind of clips. Just big, big clips, just to hold it to it. And then what we'll do is we'll trim it after it dries. Uh, I may leave it overnight just to make sure it's got a good, um, here is good and of course this is the top insulated it's all glued in um, probably let it sit overnight and then we'll trim it up and I'll show you the final product um, I'll keep saying final product final product but you know it does take a couple stages 
Um, if you're interested in one, um, I, I, you can make it yourself. That carpet pad, actually, I forgot to say, um, it was a larger one um, that was uh, about 90 bucks. It was about an 8 by 10 or a 9 by 12, something like that. So, um, and you know, of course, it doesn't take the whole one in here. You could use a smaller one. But, you know, by the time you buy the can and the carpet pad and the caulk, um, and uh, I do have one extra garbage can, 20 gallon. If you want one, um, I may consider building one for you and, um, of course, you know, figure out a price and then you'd have to pay shipping. But, um, you're not going to find anything else like that on the market, I can tell you that. And these people putting cardboard in them, really, give me a break. I mean, th this is uh, padded and uh, insulated and everything. Okay, so we'll, we'll show you trimmed up final version and I'll even show some, some things placed inside of it. So, here we are with the, basically the final Faraday cage best fairly cage because A, we have a smaller garbage can which means it's lighter, you can get to the inside uh, without piling stuff up and it's not going to be too heavy. Um, B, instead of cardboard, you, you have an actual rubber backed felt on the front part carpet pad and um, which is a better insulator. And I'm going to take these clips off, which I used just while it was setting up overnight. And we're going to trim up the top. But you can see how nice the inside is. Now, this is a first class operation here. Um, Use a razor blade. This stuff will dull uh, razor blades pretty quick. I've got these scissors that have a self-sharpening thing, and um, I may leave a little bit of extra so that it's a tight fit with the uh, top. But to be honest, you really don't need much. So we'll just go around, kind of the top and press against the, the metal. And I do want it to look nice since we put this effort into it. And one of the first things that we're going to use to put into it is going to be the radio I showed earlier on the video. It's a shortwave receiver. When people think about, you know, these Eaton Red Cross things, which are great because you can hand generate the power. But the problem is, is most of those are AM, FM, very few are shortwave. Um, and they're also not digital, they're just bad receivers. Whereas that Tuscan um, I showed is actually a pretty good receiver, as I was saying. So, um, there we go, right there, very nice, and um, I saw somebody saying that uh, one of the ways you can check is to put a radio in it, and if there's uh, all static, that means it's working, I, I don't know, is that a safe test, I don't know, but Listen, if this doesn't protect your electronic equipment, nothing is. So, if we've got a situation where this isn't protecting it, then we're, we're SOL. So, anyways, that's how you see. I'll show you another little remnant of, uh, so you can tell again, this carpet pad um, can be picked up um, at Lowe's or eBay. Uh, I would recommend not just getting the felt or not just getting the rubber because uh, they do make rubber mats to put underneath uh, area rugs. But again, this one has felt and then rubber on the other side. It's all one piece. 
So the rubber gives you that great insulator and the felt gives you the softness so you don't I mean it's not super soft it's like a recycled felt but but this is the best one and again it's not the cheapest but it's the best for Faraday cage. So if you have any comments or um, like I said I have one more garbage can I'm probably just going to keep one I'm, I may I may end up uh, selling one um, it's a lot of work behind the scenes when I cut the video, so I'm not thrilled. But I do have a box I could ship it in. So if you're interested, um, I, I could possibly do one for you. It took a couple of tubes of caulk as well, which was surprising. Um, and I'll probably let it air out of there too, just for the caulk smell. But uh, anyways, let's hope the EMP never happens. Let's hope uh, there's no sunspot that wipes everything out, but the sunspot uh, activity is probably a more of a possibility. Well, we know the sunspot will happen. Um, that will wipe out a good deal, if not all of our electronics. We just don't know when, whether it's in a year, two, three, or two, three centuries or millennia, we just don't know. Uh, the EMP would be a man-made event, but um, you know Iran is already working toward nuclear capability, and from what I understand, um, they also have uh, I think it's three submarines on order which could deploy nuclear weapons. Um, but also, I've heard they have cargo ships or military ships disguised as cargo ships, and. Um, the hatch or the so-called storage containers will open and they can fire off nuclear weapons. That's not good because they could be right off the coast of the U.S. and either directly hit and, and, and drop it on us or they could fire one over the center of America and create an EMP which would just devastate and like I said we probably devour ourselves. So, uh, as Ham say, 73s, that means uh, the best to you and goodbye. And um, we'll be posting more videos on the various topics that I'm familiar with.